Jim Brooks spent eight years as a reporter in Moscow and six years reporting from inside Ukraine. And he is now a fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracy. And he joins us now live from Lenox, uh, Massachusetts. Uh, Jim, so glad you're here. Uh, I want to go to some New York Times reporting uh, you, that you. U.S. intelligence uh, learned that the Kremlin has given the Russian military to go ahead and invade Ukraine. You know the region well. What are you hearing from your sources about a possible imminent invasion? Well, people are very concerned. Uh, I had a friend who was going on a date on Saturday night, and his potential date was going through sniper lessons. Oh, wow. <laughs> so there's a lot of mobilization. Um, yeah, it, people are taking it very seriously. Some people are withdrawing from Kyiv to Lviv, which is uh, in the far western end of the country near the Polish border. The U.S. Embassy is withdrawn to there. Uh, Putin is making a very credible threat. Uh, we're talking about he's assigned military policemen to patrol parts of Ukraine. He's built up field hospitals. Uh, so we're really at the knife's edge. Either he invades or he doesn't invade, but he's making a very credible threat. Military exercises with Belarus near the Ukraine border were supposed to end on Sunday, but they're being extended. So what signal is that sending both inside Ukraine and to also NATO? Right, good question. It's a terrible signal because basically Russia is going to leave 30,000 troops indefinitely in Belarus, which is nominally a sovereign country. And we may wake up uh, that the Ukraine crisis has passed, we may. But we may wake up with 30,000 troops permanently stationed in Belarus, which could threaten the three small Baltic republics, which are, I visit each one of them, they're very nice, uh, free market democracies, multi-party democracies, and now they're threatened on all sides by, by Russia. So it's, uh, um, the, the Belarus situation is, is a real development where it seems that Russia has essentially gobbled up Belarus and integrated Belarus into its military planning. Jim, this is such an atmosphere of tension. Ukrainian forces have been ordered not to respond to Russian provocations. What point, though, will Ukrainian forces have to fight back? Well, I think they're going to hunker down, and they have. Now, the separatist shell, the kindergarten, there's a picture of a shell hole blasted right through the kindergarten room. Fortunately, no kids were there or hurt. Um, there, there prov provocative shelling going on. Uh, don't forget that in the frontline areas, uh, they've been in their trenches for eight years, the Ukrainian troops. Uh, they know how to hunker down and, um, and sort of wait it out. But it's clear that Russia is trying to provoke something. They've, they're really following the blueprint with the Georgia War of 2008, which is evacuating uh, women and children from these so-called separatist republics. Uh, the Russian parliament asked Putin to recognize these republics as separate states. Um, we're having this provocative shelling going on. It, it really is precisely the strategy they followed before they invaded um, Georgia in 2008, including ending a large military exercise, but not taking the tanks and trucks and armored personnel carriers home. They're staying there. So Ukraine's president is a subject of a less than flattering op-ed piece today in the New York Times by the editor of the Kiev Independent. Now, the piece states point blank that he's over uh, in over his head in this job. So what is the feeling towards him inside Ukraine right now? Well, people have to rally around their president because there's a huge external threat. But mm -hmm. in his two and a half years, he's gone through five economy ministers and I think eight energy ministers. Uh, his background is he was a professional comedian, actor, media entrepreneur. But uh, we all thought he would learn on the job, and I'm not sure through that much learning. He also his number one political rival is on charge for treason which most people see is pretty ridiculous so in a time for unity he's got two of his political opponents uh, facing trials uh so that's makes for a divided country unfortunately so, so but he's what the country has and they mm -hmm. gotta stick with him for now the elections won't be for two years right all right jim brook visiting fellow at the foundation for defense of democracy thank you so much for joining to uh, joining us and always good to have you Thank you.